Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the organizer for giving me the possibility to speak here to you. And, well, I'm Marco Perone. I work in a company called Envy Labs in Provincia di Udine. And today I'd like to play the game of the Tower of Hanoi with you. I hope everybody can more or less see it because it will be my interactive tool to, <laughs> to code. And I hopefully will clarify something to you as long as I code. I chose it because it's quite a simple game. Uh, well, uh, the rules are you have uh, some disks, you have three packs, you need to move all the disks from the first pack to the third pack. And what you can do is just move one disk at a time in the game, uh, paying attention never to put a bigger disk above a smaller one. Uh, so this is an invalid disposition and we want to avoid to end up in this position. So uh, it is interesting because it's pretty simple, it's straightforward, but it has still some interesting properties, some uh, domain invariants we want to care about while we write our code and we implement the solution for it. So when we think about the domain invariants, domain laws, something that we want to really care about when we write software, usually we have mainly two ways to, uh, to tackle the problem. So the first way that one is generally used is to write tests. So we want to assert that a certain property of uh, our implementation hold, and so we write a test for it. We want to know that that function with those inputs return that thing, so we write a test for it. And when that thing does not happen, so when the test fails, we receive a notification that there is a problem uh, in our code. So uh, from this point of view, tests uh, enable us to know when there is a failure uh, in our code, so when the properties are violated. Uh, on the other hand, another tool we could use is just use types, and that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. So uh, nowadays, almost every programming language has some kind of type, some idea of types hanging around, uh, the main difference between programming languages is uh, how types are checked. So you can have them checked at uh, compile time or at runtime, or how types are checked. So you can check them strictly, and you can think, uh, well, I have Haskell in mind as a language, where if you say string, it cannot be an integer, and the programming language will convert it to a string for you. Uh, or you can check types in a weak way. Uh, for example, you can think to PHP when uh, you mm, pass the string containing the number 34, and when you need uh, a number, well, that is fine because the language is able to convert it to a number. And types, if you are able to be expressive enough with them, they are a way uh, to ensure that certain properties of your program hold. For example, a very simple program, if you declare uh, that the first input to a function must be a string, then you know that you will not be able to pass something else to it. So that's a property of that function uh, that will always hold through the life of your application. And the interesting thing is that uh, if you have uh, really expressive types, you, if you have a way to be very expressive with types, you, if you have a really powerful type system, as the one that we have in Idris, I uh, will show you, you are able to express complicated properties of your software. So let me stop just blubbering and waving my hands here and start going to write some code. Uh, so, we want to implement the game of the Tower of Hanoi, so we start saying that we have a new model that's called Hanoi. Is it big enough? Can you see it? Yeah, okay, it's fine. All right, and since we are doing type-driven development, the first thing we want to do is define a type. So what's the type? I want to describe a disposition for the game of the Tower of Hanoi. So I'm gonna say we're gonna have a disposition that's gonna be a type. So this is the type declaration of the thing, and now I'm gonna need to define the actual value of this type. So what is this disposition? So we said before, well, we have 
uh, a list, a collection of disk, an order collection of disk, and in it, Idris, we express this saying we have a list. It's just an order collection. And then for each one of the disk, we need to say, where is it? Is it on the first peg, on the second peg, or in the third peg? Well, we can just identify for the moment the pegs with some natural numbers. Let's say the first peg will be zero, the second peg will be one, and the third peg will be two. So I can say that the disposition for the moment is just a list of natural numbers. So to prove to you that this makes at least some sense, I could do an example and have an example disposition that is just a list that contains, for example, let me try to do this one. So the smallest peg is on one, that's the second peg. The second smallest disk is on two. And then we have five disks on not one, but zero. Ah, zero, zero, zero. Uh, no, I have one more. Okay, so this is the description in code of the disposition I have here. All right. And okay, so let's see if it compiles because as it is with uh, statically typed languages, uh, if it compiles, it should be correct. So it compiles, it says file loaded successfully. And so we should be happy. Uh, for the moment, but uh, if we look at our game, we are and we think about what we did up to now. Well, we can see that we are able to describe every possible disposition that we okay we can obtain in the real life with this data structure that we define here. This disposition, but the problem is that we can we can have many more things in this disposition that we have in the code, but we can't have in the real life. So we need to uh, refine our type and try to restrict it. But first, let's see where's the problem. So for example, I can have a fourth peg disposition. All right. <laughs> and all right, let's see. And I can say I have this position with 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm... So I have the smallest peg on the, the smallest disk on the first peg, the second smallest disk on the second peg, the third disk on the third peg, and I'm saying that I have also a fourth disk on a fourth peg. But I actually don't have a fourth peg. So this three here, even if in Idris it compiles, so for Idris it's fine, in the real life it's not fine. So I should not be able to write it down. I don't want it to compile. So to do this, we need to refine our type. And how can we do that? Well, we import, first off, a new data type that's called fin. Uh, actually, it's data.fin. And let's see the definition of this. So if you see, uh, yeah, down below, uh, the compiler, the type checker, tells us that fin is actually a function that takes a natural number and returns a type. So you should be kind of, should be something strange here because we have a function returning a type. This is not usual in other programming languages. Well, that's the real news uh, of Idris. Well, Idris is not the only language having this feature, but uh, you don't see it very often. Um, the big news that we have here is that as in functional programming, we can treat functions as values, oh, so we can pass functions around and input the function and as we can have them as return types of uh, functions. Here in Idris, we can have types as arguments of function and as return types of function. We can just pass types around. So, and this fin data type is just something that tells, okay, we receive natural number and we give, we'll give a type that represents all the natural numbers strictly less than the number I received in input. So, for example, if here I have not not, but I have fin three, the uh, possible values now will be zero, one, and two. 
So yeah, not three, but zero, one, and two. So zero, one, and two. So if now I'm trying to compile, I have a compile time error. And it's telling me that this line 12 does not compile. Why? Because three is not strictly less than three. So at compile time, I'm able to say that this code will not work. So let me remove this. OK, we could be pretty happy now because we were able to remove some invalid disposition. And what we'd like to do now is to pass some other information to the type level. Uh, and what is this information? It's actually the length of the list. So now the length of the list is something that we know at runtime. So we know at runtime that this is a list of length 3 and this is a list of length 7. Uh, to be able to reason about more precisely about the things that I have in my code, I would like to pass this information at the type level so I can reason about it just writing types. And to do this, I just need to import another data structure that's called vect. And yeah, let's see the definition of vect. The definition of vect is just a function that takes a natural number that is the length of the list, uh, a type of the elements of the list, and returns a type, which is the list of that length with elements of that type. So now we can say here that this is a vect of, well, let's say length seven for the moment, and we need to, to make it compile, we need to add something down here. All right, so now we were able to pass the information of the length of the list uh, at uh, the type level, but we lost the possibility of playing with a game with three disks. We are writing, we are hard coding the fact that we have always seven disks. Well, actually, this is pretty easy to fix. Uh, we can make our disposition type not being just a type, but a function that returns the types, taking in input a natural number. So I'm saying this takes an input, the number of this, and produces a vector of that particular number of this, containing just elements of which can have values 0, 1, and 2, identifying the first, the second, and the third pack. All right. Uh, so this now becomes a disposition of length 7, and also this one is a disposition of length 7. So let me go back and say that this is a disposition of length 3 to show that I can have different lengths. And it compiles. Everything's fine. And all right. So now let's... We have, uh, in my opinion, a good description of the model of our game. Let's start to think uh, what we should do if we want to actually play the game. So first off, we need to define what's the starting disposition of the game. So what does what's the initial disposition when we start playing with the game? Well, this would be a disposition generally of length n. Oops, no, not that. Um, start in this position, what should it be? Well, we want to have a disposition that has all the disks on the first bank when we begin. All right? Uh, but now the length is uh, a variable. So we cannot just write something like uh, uh, zero, 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 because this is a length of this is a list of length three, and it's not generally of length ten. So we need to use simply a function from the either scores called replicate, and it will just uh, produce a list of the correct length that is gonna always contain uh, the zero value. But I'm sorry, I forgot something. Uh, I want like just to make everything more readable. I want to define another data structure on called PAG, and I'm giving value. It could be either first or second or third. So now, well, uh, let me just comment this out. 
I guess it's not a problem. And this will become first, second, all right, second, third. I hope this is more readable now. We don't have those zero, one, and two. We can really understand what we are talking about. As so this will be replicate for the right amount of time the value first. So this is going to produce a list of length n, which contains all the elements equal to first. And similarly, we're going to define a win in this position, so the disposition we want to have in the end. And this is a disposition of uh, length n. Uh, too much help from the editor. Uh, win in this position. Uh, this is just as before, a replicate of the correct length of the third pack. So this is a disposition that has all the disks in the last, the third pack. All right, uh, what do we want to do now? So we have described uh, and produced some example of this position. Now we want to be able to interact with the disposition. We want to be able to actually perform a move. So let's start to write a move function. So what do we need to do uh, to perform a move? Well, we can describe a move in this way. We can say we want to pick a disk from this bag, so, and we want to move it to another bag. So we need to take a bag that is the where we pick the disk from. We have another bag where we put the disk. We need to know actually with which disposition we are currently working, which is the current state of the disposition, and we would like to produce a new disposition. So the, last, the first three things are the arguments, the last one is the return type. But if we look at the game and we see how it works, uh, it's not true that for every possible choice of from, to, and a starting disposition, we will get a valid move. So for example, if I'm trying to pick a disk from this pack where there are no disks, well, that's actually an invalid move. So somehow I need to tell this to uh, whoever calls this move function. And so the standard way, I'll say, uh, to do this in functional programming is use uh, a maybe data type. So this is just adding a value to the codomain of the function. I'm saying the function can return either a new disposition or it can return nothing. And this nothing will be a signal that something went wrong somewhere. All right, so let's start to... Oh, what's wrong here? What's wrong here? Uh, all right, thank you. All right, thanks. Now it's compiled, so I'm fine again. Uh, all right, so let's start to define this. So uh, first thing, let's give some meaningful names to this variable. So we have the from peg, the to peg, and the start disposition. And now we need to start considering some cases. So the first case we want to consider is what if we are playing with a disposition that actually does not have any disk at all. We never excluded that from our types. So this is a possible disposition. So I'm asking Idris to split the two cases, the cases where uh, the disposition, the starting disposition is the empty list, so we don't have any disk or it's just a disposition where we have at least one disk. Well, let's first consider the case when we don't have any disk. If we don't have any disk where we are fairly sure that there's no move that's actually possible to be done. So we're asking Idris to provide an implementation and it says that, okay, uh, nothing, uh, because that's the easiest maybe type it can maybe value it can provide, and that's actually what we want. We want to say that this is not a valid move. So let's start to consider the other case when we have at least one disk. Well, since uh, our disposition, we are considered it to be ordered. So the first uh, element of our disposition is the position of the smallest disk. We can, oh, we can call this 
smallest disposition, and then we have the rest of the disposition. This column-column notation here just means, okay, you have a list, and this smallest disposition is the first element of the list, and this rest of the disposition is the tail of the list, everything else you have on the list. All right, so now we start really writing some code, and not just writing types, and let Idris do the rest. Uh, so, let's consider some cases. So, first off, if from is equal, equal to two. So, if you're trying to pick a disk from one peg and put it back there. So, we could argue about this, but in my opinion, this should be something that's not allowed to happen. And else, well, let's think about it later. Uh, and, well, this does not compile. Why? Well, because Idris is not able to do this from equal equal to two. Because we didn't instruct him how to do it. So, we need to do this. We need to define an interface that's called EQ on the pack type. And we just need to say what happens when we have something that calls equal equal on the pack type. So, if you compare first with first, with equal equal, that should be true. If we compare second with second, this is quite verbose, I know, but there's no other way at the moment in Idris, or maybe there's other ways, but they are more verbose. Uh, so, this is the best one. And, and when we have first, second, and third, we say, okay, it's true. Uh, for any other case, we say that the result must be false. All right, uh, let's try, and it's compiling again, so we're fine. So we start, uh, we can go on with our code. And let's consider another case. So for example, if two, uh, that's no need for the parentheses, if two is equal or equal to the smallest disposition. So what happens in this case? Okay, what are we saying? We are saying that we want to pick uh, a disk from a peg and put it over the smallest disk. But remember, it's not possible to put a bigger disk above a smaller one. So this should be an invalid move. It should be nothing. And last case we need to consider. Uh, so if from is equal equal to the smallest disk position. So if this is the case, it means we are trying to pick a disk from the peg where the smallest disk is. This means we are picking actually the smallest disk. So we, we are picking it. So the rest of the disposition doesn't change. All right? It's still there. And we need to add it, the small disk back in the new peg. So we're going to say, OK, we just add it in front of the list. And now, since we are returning a maybe, we need to respect the, that fact that is a maybe, so we need to use just keyword to have a maybe value. And we need to have the else case. All right. Uh, just is a type constructor. Type constructor. Yeah, when you pass something to just, you will have something of type, maybe. So we can actually see it here. If I, oh yeah, this does not type check. Let me put something to make a type check here. And, okay, type checks, and let's see the type. So you see the type of just is something that takes any value, a producer maybe, containing something of that type. So in the else case, so now we know a lot of things. We know that from is different from to. We know that to is different from the smallest disposition. And we know that from is different from the smallest disposition. So we know quite a lot. In particular, we know that uh, from and to are different from the peg where the smallest disk is. So what we can actually do is, since we don't care about the smallest disk because its peg is not touched, we can think, uh, just in the abstract way, that we are removing it. So we are playing with uh, an easier game that has one disk less. 
and thus we are going to use some recursion. So let's move from to on the rest of the disposition. And since this is uh, something of type maybe, because that's what a move function returns, uh, if we want to go back to a uh, disposition of length n, this is a disposition of length n minus 1, so, but we need to return something of length n, so we need to add the smallest disk back right where it was. And to do this, we need to respect the, just, the, just, uh, the maybe data structure, and we need just to add the smallest disk in front of the list that we obtain from this operation here. Okay, uh, so let's see. This compiles, and this actually is the correct implementation, but uh, I, uh, I won't be surprised if you're not convinced that this is the correct implementation. So uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, provide you some examples and show you that this can seem something like uh, correct. So let's try to do some examples. So for example, move, oh, let's try some moves, uh, move first to second. So let's try move uh, first to second uh, and the disposition, let's say, where we have three pegs on three disks on the first peg. So this disposition. And what should be the return type? Well, it's adjust because this is a valid move. I'm picking the smallest disk and putting it on the second peg. And so it should be the smallest disk is on the second peg and the other two remained on the first peg. All right, uh, this is becoming too large. All right, uh, okay, mm, this is fine, but you should notice that I wrote this equality not as a value, but I wrote this as the type of that variable I'm trying to define. So this equality is actually a type in Idris. So in fact, if you look at the type of this e equal sign, we see that this equal sign is an infix operator. It's a function which takes two things that can be of whatever type they like, and it returns a type. So to make sure that this equality actually holds, we need to provide a value of the correct type. So let's try to do that. Actually, let's ask Idris how to do it. And so Idris will say, OK, uh, the correct value should be this raffle. Let's see the type of raffle. Well, raffle is something of type x equals x. So these two lines uh, I'm writing here, uh, they will compile only if the type of raffle is an equality where the left-hand side and the right-hand side are actually equal. And they are equal because Idris is able to uh, compute this move first, second with the disposition using the algorithm I described above and uh, compute exactly the second value. So since the two values are equal, this whole thing type checks. And so at compile time, we have a working test. So I'm defining test and the cool thing, uh, in my opinion here, is that if a test fail, your program won't compile. So you, have, uh, uh, you can have a test coverage uh, that forbids your code to actually compile, so you will not be able to use it if you have a failure in your test. So let's try to do some other tests just to convince you that this is actually uh, something correct. So let's try a more complicated move. So move the second from the second disk to the third disk in a disposition well, the, where the smallest disk is on the first peg, the second disk on the second peg, and the third disk is on the third peg. So what should it be? So we're picking from the second peg, and we're moving it to the third. So this should be a just. And the smallest disk remains on the smallest peg, and the second moves to the third peg, 
and the third remains on the third peg. All right, so let's ask again to Idris if this is fine. It says raffle, and it types X. So this test passes. And let's try also some tests for the failing cases, the cases where we're, we're returning nothing. So for example, let's say move the same tag. So if I try to move first to first of, I mean, uh, let's have a disposition with all th with three disks on the first bag. So we are like this. So we said that we can have the two pegs which are equal. So this should return nothing. And let's see if Idris agrees with us. He does. Let's compile. And he compiles. And let's try also a completely wrong move. So let's try to pick, uh, I don't know, second and move it to the third in a disposition when we don't have a disk uh, in the second peg. So we don't have anything in the second peg. So we can't pick anything from there. So this should be a nothing. And let's see if Idris confirms this. Yes, it does. It compiles. All right. Uh, okay, we are back. And all right. So uh, we now have our function. We have a test suite for it. So we should be pretty happy about it. But uh, we still have 15 minutes to go, so we can improve our definition. And uh, for example, I'm not really satisfied from the fact that every time I'm calling this move function, I need to check if from is equal to two. Uh, well, I would like to be able to tell the, any caller of this move function that this is not something that is possible. I will not allow uh, the client to actually do the call, receive a nothing value back, and then handle the case. I want it to make just impossible to make such a call. And to do this, well, we should need to refine our types. So we need first to give some names at the type level. So this should be called from, this should be called to. And to be more precise in our types, we are going to just ask another argument. And this argument will ask the client of the function to produce the evidence that from is actually different from to. And we need to write it in this way. So the assertion from different to two is true. So is the Boolean true? And if we do this, well, we need to add a new argument everywhere. We are doing this move call. So here, for example. And since this has the equal operator at the type level, we saw before uh, that the only possible value that this uh, to obtain such a, an equal type is to having this raffle keyword around. So I'm just mm, dumbly put this raffle keyword around without even thinking if it's correct. So if now I'm trying to compile, what should we expect? Well, uh, the thing is we expect is that the, the test case where we were actually calling move with the two equal pegs this is not valid anymore. It's not more a uh, possible uh, mm, combination of value we should use. Because Idris is telling us that is not able to find the evidence that first different from first holds true. So what we were able to do, we were able to move a property that we wanted to hold true of our move function from a test to the types. So we are actually moving this from something that we check separately uh, directly on the type of the function. So if we want to go back to compiling, I need to comment this out because this is now check on the types. And we'll also gain the fact that we don't need any more these two lines of code because that thing is already checked at the type level. So I can 
throw this away and bring down this back. All right. OK, we gained the thing that uh, our move function is not callable with two equal pegs. But uh, it's now annoying uh, the fact that we need to have this proof argument all around. But we are lucky uh, because this is something trivial. It can have only a raffle value. So we can ask Idris to do the job for us. So we're going to use this notation, auto. And yeah, uh, with this, trust me, I can remove all the things that I just added. And I can remove all this raffle I added around in my code. And also this one. And now, if I compile it again, it compiles. If I am commenting uh, back these two lines, removing the raffle, now, well, as you should expect, this does not type check because I'm checking at the type level that, uh, and automatically with Idris, that from different to two needs to hold true. So I need to comment this back again. Um, yeah, so uh, we were able to improve uh, our move function by refining its type. And now I would like to do a final refinement. And because there's another thing that bugs me a bit about the definition of this move, this move function is that it returns a maybe. I would like to have a function that I give it some arguments and it returns a new disposition, not just something that wraps a new disposition. But we said before we use this maybe because sometimes this operation may fail. Well, but we just saw uh, that we have a way uh, to restrict somehow the domain of our function to exclude some values to be passed uh, to our function. So let me try to improve definition of this uh, and define a move prime function. Let me write this. It's going to become a little long, so I better go like this. And let's try to remove this maybe type here and try to create a function that just returns a new disposition. So we said that we need to restrict the domain of a function, and we can do that just as we did before. So we can use auto, and we just add this just proof argument. And because we have a way to distinguish if a disposition that we obtain for, from our move function is valid or not, well, we can see if our move function returns a just or returns a nothing. If the move we are trying to do is a just, that is valid. If the return of move is nothing, then the move was not valid. So we have a way to distinguish if it's valid or not. So I'm asking Idris to uh, check if what we do when we call uh, no, when we call move with from to, and I need to give a name to this, Well, when we do move from to this position, what we have is just. It's not a nothing. So we just define a type. Now we need to provide an implementation for this move prime function. So uh, how do we do that? Well, we have its arguments that are from, to, and this position. And we need to say, OK, first we compute move, so the function we defined above, with those arguments. So from, to, and this position. And we see what we get. So if we get something of type just, well, just will contain a new disposition. Just is just a wrapper for another value. So if this was the case, so if move with these values return adjust, well, we have the new disposition. The move was valid. And so we can just return our new disposition. And this new disposition 
will be the return value of our move prime function. Uh, and if we want, this, this is not needed, but I guess it makes things more clearly, more clearer, uh, more clear. Uh, say, if we have, if move return a nothing, well, since here we have a proof that move actually return a just, so this should be impossible. It's actually, it's, it's not possible for that to happen. So I'm just telling Idris, you could never arrive at this point. So this type checks. So since it compiles, this must be correct. So, but to be sure, I will just like to take the test I had above and rewrite them for my new move prime function. So I'm just adding some dashes around to make avoid duplicate names and to use my move prime function and not the move function. So all right. And I also need to remove all the just I had before because now my move prime function returns a disposition, not a maybe of a disposition. So we can remove all the things. And here we have a problem because now we are returning a disposition, not a maybe a disposition. So nothing is not more a possible value. So let's just leave something that Idris will figure it out if it's possible to do something. But if we try to compile, well, as we expected, we have a compile time error. And Idris is telling us that here at line 73 is not able to prove that nothing is actually a just. Well, it's not able to do that because it's a false thing. So uh, as we did above, we were able to pass something we need to check with the test at the type level. So I can comment this out. And now if we go one second back to our move function, what we were able to do just with defining precise types, we were able to create a function that we can call only with values that will work. So if we try to call this function with values which does not work, which are not correct for the function, we will have a compile time error. So at compile time, we are completely safe that this function is going to be used in the correct way. So all right, I would like to spend, OK, uh, this is more or less it. I would like to finish showing you that this is not just something that you play with to uh, get used to types or have fun with them, but you can actually create uh, programs which uh, you can run. Now, I'm not going to show you some really impressive stuff, but I would like to show you that with the code I just wrote and some more, um, we can create a game we can play uh, in, for example, in our console. Uh, to play the Anoi Tower game. So what I'm writing is just, I'm telling Idris compile the Anoi.idr file using the effects library, put the executable in a file called Hanoi, and it takes time to compile, some seconds, and when it's done, okay, we have this Anoi file, I can launch it from the console, and it's printing uh, in its drawing, uh, and that's the most graphics I can do. Uh, so that should represent a disposition when you have all when you have three disks on the first peg. Okay, try to imagine that. And it's asking us uh, where do you want to start your first move. So I'm trying to say okay from the first peg, and he said no, that's not what I was expecting. Please enter one, two, or three. So I'm telling, OK, 0, no. So OK, 1. I want to move the first from the first disk to the third. So all right, that was a correct move. It draws the new disposition, and it asks again. So now I'm going to try to solve the game as fast as I can. So 3, 
to two, oh, no, 12, two, then from one to three, then from two to one, then from two to three, and then from one to three, and I made it. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. And I guess that's it. Uh, so uh, if we have time for some questions, otherwise you can find me around if you have something to ask. Okay.